Good, happy Sunday morning. It's your early morning Sunday show. Yeah, that's what I call it, isn't it? Eh. Hey, it is like really early. I, 3 a.m. All right, here we go. I even stayed up late, uh, sleeping late, and things just didn't seem to work out. So we're up, we're at it because that's what we do around here. Look at this. I got to show you this. This is really neat. See this? For all you from Ohio, you must know this man. You must know this man. This is Russ Walker. He had talk shows in the 90s, early aughts there. Uh, and actually, I was touring around with him. We, we work together now. He's no longer in the radio business. And so it's... Um, we were two, and I didn't know he was in radio, so we're just talking. He goes, yeah. And he says he had mugs. I go, what, you got mugs? He goes, yeah, I got a mug with my picture on it. I go, I want a mug with your picture on it. So every time I drink coffee, I look at you, Russ. So his name is Russ Kurtz, and he actually he watches my channel. So Russ, cheers to you early. And the cat just came down. I've actually been down here for a little while, and he hasn't bothered me until, I swear to God, as soon as I flipped on this camera. Here he is, but we're settling down. We're not licking my face, so maybe we'll have a good one. In the background today, it's a group I really liked, <coughs> especially in the 90s. Osric Tentacles, this is my favorite one, Jurassic Shift. I really think that's a, it's a fun album, very atmospheric, electronic, atmospheric. Uh, maybe sounds better on ecstasy, I don't know. Uh, good stuff couple shout outs here I've been trying to do that uh, so many great new channels here's a few I've been listening to headlong into sound been really enjoying what uh, been being shown on there this one's been around a long time but he doesn't have very many views and I guess you know he doesn't do music ones constantly but he does a lot of different ones and it's Yaman Yaman J O A M O N uh, Namanan I hope I'm saying your name right now, Uh He he lives, uh, I think, toward the East Coast now, uh, originally from Korea. He's been doing the series. It's uh, 28 Days of Cooking. So every day for the month of February, he's cooking a different recipe, and his wife does the cooking. So he has to go into the kitchen and starts, starts messing things up. And it's it's been fun. I've just been enjoying this series a lot. But he's, uh, you know, he just has barely over 100 subs, and he's been around a while. <laughs> he's He's what you call a character, also an incredible artist, an incredible artist, um, does the great stuff. And the other one is Richard McCook, so Richard McCook. Uh, three channels, I'll write them down, I would say I would link them, but we've all by now learned that I just don't get it, don't get it. This episode, this is the Blind Buy episode. I'm going to talk about Blind Buys, folks. I'm going to tell you I have... The albums I selected are ones I've recently purchased, and they were all total blind buys. I don't know what I'm getting into. I might know little snippets about something, but I really don't know anything about them, so I bought them. I bought them to see what's going on. I love blind buys. I've done blind buys for years. I've gotten into some great music, and I've bought some terrible music. It's called the blind buy, right? You don't know what you're going to get. So uh, I'm going to tell you why I would have purchased these. You know, what made me decide, yeah, man, I need to have that. Or, you know, because it's thousands of albums, right? You could do thousands of blind buys. But you do want to get stuff that, that you do know, but they're just a lot of fun. Right, kitty cat? All right. Must be on drugs. He's really quiet. All right, so the first one. Now, this is going to be because Car, Car, Car. There you have it. Please pronounce it any way you personally would like to pronounce it, okay? Uh, this, it's, this is actually, it's Thai. That's Thai, and it's for aeroplane. We'll get into that in a minute. Three members of this group. It's uh, Mark Spear, who's on guitar. We have uh, Linda, no, Laura Lee. Laura Lee's on bass, and Dono DJ Johnson is on the drums. It's, you would classify it as kind of global, but it would have more of a soul, dub, and psychedelic feel to it. 
it's mostly all instrumental and it's actually very jazzy kind of a real nice jazz feel so how this uh, this album's from 2015 it's their uh, first one called the universe smiles upon you I bought this because I just saw this two lines it said Thai influenced huh well I just had bought that you know a few episodes back some Thai music which is a little weird but I thought all right let's just see what someone's doing with Thai music they said it went and found Thai funk on that so how this group came about is uh, you know the guitar Spears and Mitt uh, DJ Johnson at church. It was some Methodist church, and they were both playing instruments, and they got to know each other playing, uh, the, you know, playing in the church orchestra or whatever it was. Uh, that was in uh, like uh, 20, 2004 they met. Then in 2007, Spear met Laura Lee uh, through mutual friends because they had an interest, a similar interest, and get this, Afghan music and Middle East architecture. Those kind of people are hard to find. If that's your interest, you just don't find a lot of them walking around the street. What are you like? Well, I'm really digging this Afghan music going on right now. That's kind of where I'm into. So, hey, they found each other. I think that's fantastic. So, they eventually, they all got together and they formed this group. Now, this is, uh, Laura Lee was learning Thai. And so, that's where this comes from. That means aeroplane. And she has said, uh, as in, in foresight, or in foresight, she goes, that was probably not a good idea because nobody can pronounce her name. And I would just have to say, Laura Lee, duh. This was a wonderful album. I, I, I truly enjoyed it. it. They call it Thai Funk Instrumental. It, it just had a real jazzy feel to it. And uh, I, 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 I would high, highly recommend this. It is instrumental, so you're not going to get a lot of the grooves but has a little global groove in it. I didn't feel a lot of tie in there. I, I, I truly didn't, but I did feel the jazz and the soul and the psychedelic going on. Now, in 2018, they did do a second album, and the second album was called Con, um, Con Todo El Mundo, Con Todo El Mundo, um, and that would be With All the World. And I haven't picked that up, but I'm going to because I really like that. So. That was a great blind buy. It vinyls, black vinyl, label, you know, they just make weird labels now. All right, so the next blind buy, Steve Reich. And I found this at Half Price Bookstore. And I'm there, I'm looking at the rack, and there it's sitting there, kind of the classical, classical and jazz. It's in between two. I didn't know which one it was. Now, I, somehow this name sounded familiar, and I think someone in the VC had said it, but I didn't know anything much about it. And it wasn't very cheap. So, you know, blind buy, kind of expensive. But what caught my interest was it was on the ECM label that everyone has talked a lot about. Isn't that ecumenical church music? Is that what ECM stands for? Evangelical church music? No idea. All right, so we're making that all up. So, I purchased... Dude, dude, you're on the albums. Why do you have to do that? Why do you have to stand on the albums, man? God, bless it. Alright, so I gave, I gave this thing a shot, and this was, uh, it's classical, it's modern classical. So Steve Reich, uh, you know, actually born in 1936, and he's an American composer. Uh, and he helped pioneer the, the minimal music, uh, as especially started in the late 60s, so more minimal um, classical type music. Well, this album came out in 1974. This guy was also been known to use uh, lots of loops and repetitive type sounds and repetitive rhythms and, and harmonics within his music uh, that you find in a lot of electronics. Well, in 74, he came out with this one, and he had a lot of different ideas in what he used on this. But the basic thing is he had 11 different... Um, 11 different chords are what he called pulses. It starts off with these 11 different chords, these pulses going on, and then as it goes, he breaks it down, and each pulse gets its own little section, and then it all comes back together. You know, what I really thought about is music like from Moby, some of his more 
little classical oriented pieces and how you have all these different sounds and uh, and, and you do, you have these different chords and they all start to come together and he pulls them all together to make this huge sound. Well, you know, he pulled them, then he separates them out and brings them back together. I am, um, you know, what he called, you know, he says, you know, by using these 11, you know, different musicians, it allowed him to create more of a psychoacoustic effect. Love this album. Absolutely loved it. I'm going to look for this guy. I, this this was an expensive blind buy, but it said ECM. I thought, ECM? Well, everyone says that's a great label, and I do have a couple things from ECM. So that was the blind buy. Well worth it. That was, a, you know, some bucks to give it a shot. Uh, that, but it's a nice fight at Half Price Bookstore. Okay, next blind buy. Mystic Braves, Desert Island. Wow, look at that, huh? So I'm thumbing through the racks, and I see this thing, and I'm looking there. Wow, that looks like psychedelic. <laughs> uh, wow, I, isn't that neat? Look at those covers. It's really cool looking stuff on there. I paid 14 bucks, and, and but I was blown away by the cover. So this thing, it was the cover that caught me. I was thinking maybe 60, 70 psychedelic. And no, it's from uh, from 2014, 2014. What should have told me, I don't always look. I looked at the condition of the vinyl, it looked good. But when you see that kind of label, yeah, no, that ain't from the 60s or the 70s, right? Not even the 80s, that's our thing now. But uh, the Mystic Braves, it's garage rock from LA. And, you know, they formed in 2011. They originally called themselves Blackfeet Braves. But in 2013, they changed it to Mystic Braves. Probably Blackfeet Braves. They would have got a lot of crap about that. Say, well, you're not, you know, you're, you're being, um, you're not thinking about the indigenous people. And what are you using their name for? So, hey, smart move. Call yourself Mystic Braves. And it's psychedelic rock, garage rock. I kind of think for those of, you know, of the 80s, you think of the, um, they had the big, you know, psychedelic, you know, revival in the 80s. And the Liars is what I think of from Boston, similar to that. They had this organ going on, this really cool organ just riffing through the whole thing. I really liked it. Again, a great listen, too. It wasn't the cheapest blind buy. Cheaper than that, Steve Wright. But a great blind buy. And I have enjoyed this album. Next one. I found when I was in Texas with Chris from First Pressing Goodness. When I walk into a record store, they always have the Wall of Temptation. The Wall of Temptation there. Come buy me, look at me, buy me, spend mucho dinero. Well, I walk into that Wall of Temptation and that sucker's staring at me. Now, how can you not stop and want to buy that. I mean, that just creeped the hell out. Isn't that scary? And I have no idea anything. I'm just thinking this got to be really scary crap music or whatever. But then I turned it over and look, congas. If you got a conga, you got me interested, all right? I love that kind of stuff. And so I'm looking and go, well, that kind of looks 70s. I think, Santana-like music? Possibly. I don't know. Not a cheap album. But look at that. So, yep, you have to try, right? If it's no good, it's no good. I can't take money with me. What the hell? So I did. Barabbas. And this is their self-titled Barabbas, but they also call it... It's actually titled Wild Safari, Wild Safari a.k.a. Barabbas. And these guys are from Spain. And I guess there's a different uh, cover that they use in the U.S. Uh, this here, this this copy is from Spain. It's the label there from the RCA. And uh, you know they made music in the 70s and 80s. And uh, they, they the man that started it was Fernando Arbix. Fernando Arbix, I believe. He was the drummer and, and the producer. And really, it's Latin rock. It's Latin rock with jazz, funk. And later on, as they were making music, they began to add more disco elements to it. 
this thing is this thing if you like Santana this thing's really good there's some other bands kind of Santana -y, you know that Latin jazz going on these guys know what they're doing and really did a very good job make making this album so this came out in 1971 uh, the group the group was made up of people from Spain from the Philippines from Portugal from Cuba so, I mean, isn't that neat I mean they had this world all kinds of people around the world making this thing but you definitely feel the Cuban and, and the Spanish and the Portuguese in here what a wonderful blind buy this has been it was just a lot of fun but I bought it because look at that how could you not? That was staring at me when I walked in. Just said, Steve, buy me. And I go, okie dokie. Um, I can be an easy sell. I can be easy sell. All right, next one. It's at my local record store. I walked in. And uh, Planetariat. And he had this sticker on there. Swedish Post Rock. Swedish Post Rock. Wow. I don't have anything really modern from Sweden. It must be good. And it was an EP. And let's see if we can open. Here we go. Look at this. Hey, that was pretty neat, wasn't it? So I thought, why not? Let's give it a check. I can't find much about this group. Uh, this album was made in 2018, and it's Swedish post rock. It's instrumental. Uh, it uh, has a lot of good drum on there, but it's not like this crazy hard rock. It's it's actually quite relaxing. I wish it was a lot longer because, you know, you talk about music you can go to sleep to. I, I just find it relaxing. I could probably take a nap listening to it and feel good about myself. Totally enjoyed this album again. Total blind buy. I helped seven bucks or whatever I paid for it. But I bought it because it said Swedish. No other reason. I just I grew from Sweden. I better try it from 2018. And I was quite happy with that purchase. Now we come to a really different one. I saw this in the WAC. Soylent Green. All right, Soylent Green. Well, that sounds fascinating, doesn't it? There we go. That cover on there. So it's called A Deleted Symphony for the Beaten Down. See, there it is, A Deleted Symphony for the Beaten Down. I saw that and go, wow, well, that's kind of, has a little classical type sound to it. It has the word symphony on it. Uh, maybe that's what it's like. Kind of a classical type thing. So that was my thought. Now, I could have went to the record, to the guy at the store, because I knew him quite well, and said, hey, could you put that on for me? Uh... But I didn't because what the hell we're going to blind buy. Now, I actually, it was kind of green. Maybe if I'd stared at that record label just a little bit longer, it might have told me a little something. But I didn't. So I come home and I pop that thing on the turntable and it started to play and I go, oh, what the hell? Is, what is that? And it was, it's, it's classified as extreme metal. Tainted Lord Tony, yes, I have extreme metal. So it's like if you took sludge metal and maybe some grindcore metal and you put in some grooves, <laughs> or let's, let's say, this, this would be the proper stew. You take death metal, Add some black metal, pop in some hardcore, and then you put in some Southern Boogie. Yeah, Southern Boogie, you get Soylent Green. Now, the vocalist, he's one of those guys. Not a clue, man. I, the guy's ripping his vocal cords to shreds. He's one of those kind of screamers. I don't know what he's saying. But what saved this for me is... There is a groove. There is a groove. Do you want to get up here? Come on. Come on. There you go. All right. There we go. He, he, uh, he took a break. Had to probably go poop or something. Uh, and you do feel this groove going on in that thing. And it was really quite incredible. So I, I liked it for that part of it. But, oh, my God. The I was just, what the hell? This 
you know, Metal Steve was back, and he doesn't come out too often. So this was one of those blind buys where I'm kind, I'm thinking one thing, I'm getting something else, but luckily I found something. You know, this group started in 1988 in New Orleans. I don't believe they're around, but you know, they have this black metal and dark metal. Kind of interesting. The bass player, he was uh, killed in a suicide murder by his roommate. Uh, one of the lead vocalists died in Hurricane Katrina. So I, you know, it's a little bit scary on uh, what happened. I think this group, oh, this album was, when did this one come out? 2002 it came out. So Soil, Soylent Green is not classical. It's death metal, metal, extreme metal. All right, next blind buy. We're going to move along here. Joe King Carrasco. I just, I, okay, so I saw this album cover, and I look at that and go, well, if that doesn't smell and scream 80s, kind of a new wavy type thing, I don't know what would. The label. Nothing too fancy. MCA. So I gave this a shot. Put it on. And there was this hell of an organ in there. I mean, it's almost like a garage rock organ. The uh, gal, who is it? Kristen Cummings plays organ on this thing. There she is. Look at her. Look how cool she looks in her hat. And it was really neat. It just had this fun group going on. I didn't know of this group. And I find out they had an MTV hit. And it's actually on here. Uh, it's called Party Weekend. I bought it because it did look like it said right there. It said Party Weekend. And so I thought, well, it looks like a party in an album. And it was. This was a fun listen to. It didn't cost me much at all. And, um, you know, Joe King Carusco, his real name is uh, Joe Charles Tetch. But he took his uh, name from, there was a uh, drug kingpin. The drug kingpin's name was um, Fred, Go Fred Gonzalez Carusco. That's where he took the name from. So he came up with this thing. And uh, it's called, they call it Tex-Mex Party Music. I didn't find the Tex-Mex in the sucker, though they do probably do a little accordion in there. But that organ was really cool. It just had that garage rock organ kind of feel. That's what I like. And it is party music. It was it was a lot of fun. So a neat blind buy. It didn't cost me a lot. It totally enjoyed it. So sometimes you get a blind buy and you buy two of them. El Chicano. I saw two of them. I thought, wow, El Chicano. I, I love things that are, you know, like case there. There's a lot of, you know, Spanish in this thing. So I thought, well, that's got to be pretty freaking awesome, doesn't it? Well, they're from L.A. That's okay. Chicano, L.A., right? So this was, uh, this album, I believe, was a third one, and it came out in 1972. This one came out in 1976. It's like rock, funk, um, some jazz in there, blues in there. Again, more of a Santana band. This one, Celebration, is pretty good. This one, they begin to go into more of a dance. I think I felt a little more of a disco -y type feel. I didn't like this one as much. Uh, you know, it's kind of, this is El Chicano, really. This was like their sixth album, came in 76. It should have been the name of the first. So, uh, Celebration, not bad. Uh, not as good Santana, but I do like that jazz funk type sound that those uh, groups put out. So, it was an okay blind buy. I bought this blind buy solely because it said El Chicano. I said El Chicano, and it had uh, Latin lyrics on there. And, and, I, and I like that type of music. It helps me work on my Spanish a little bit. So, it was an all right. Next blind buy, I found this when I was with Chris uh, in Dallas. Shotgun, Good, Bad, and the Funky. This was in the, actually, this wasn't in the dollar bid. I just saw it go, wow, Good, Bad, Funky might be good. Then I look at all these guys and go, all right, we're talking, we're talking funk, baby. This is whole, this is horns and soul and everything like that going on. And, uh, they actually had, I believe, what was it, eight albums from 1978 to, no, 1977 to 1982. They put out a lot of stuff. And I guess they had eight R&B hits. I don't know a single damn one of them. Not a one of them. Never heard of this group before. But I thought the cover looked, hey, that looks kind of neat. Uh, cheesecake, Richard Riley. Uh, 
didn't do much. So this was one of those blind buys, you know. You know, I paid a few more than, you know, maybe six bucks on it. I wasn't that impressed with it. It was okay. Nothing great on there. It did not have the funk I was looking for. I thought it had a little bit more disco than funk. And I like disco, but this wasn't the proper uh, stuff to be. So, bought it because I was thinking one thing, and it really wasn't. Final one is Kim Larson and the Jungle Dreams. This was in the dollar bin. I, I like that. Go, hey, that's new wave. This is a new wave. Kim Larson's from Denmark. And actually, he was quite popular in Denmark. So he came over in the early 80s. Thought, I'm going to go to New York, and I am going to make it in the Big Apple. So he came over, and he formed the group Kim Larson and the Jungle Dreams. And this is called Sitting on a Time Bomb. And for all of you that really jam out this, okay, Stefan and uh, Jacob, you know, if you guys are from Denmark, you probably dig this guy, or maybe you like him. I don't know. I didn't, and I guess most of America did not, because never heard of him, never heard a hit from him, not a whole lot, but he is big in Denmark. Truly, truly is. Now, spent a buck, glad I only spent a buck, because for me, it was pretty disposable music. It's just like, eh, eh, okay, nice to listen to, but nothing fantastic. So, uh, that's why I bought that. I just, I thought, hey, 80s stuff, let's see what we got, some new wave going on. And it kind of was, it just kind of sucky. Not sucky as in, I'm going to vomit, but, eh, it's okay. There we go. Blind buys for the week. Uh, blind buys are fun. I have a good time with them. I keep doing them because you just never know what you're going to find. I like music, and it's my way of just finding something new without really knowing. You know, just let's give it a try. So, thanks for tuning in, and thank you, Russ Walker, alias Kurt, uh, alias Russell Kurtz, for giving me this fine mug. You gave me another one too, so that was really nice of you. Uh, new subscribers. I went to 666 and I, I pulled that. Oh my God, I'm at 666. That's the devil sign. Someone, thank God someone subscribed me. Oh, I got off that devil sign quick. Whew. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> the cat would have went, he probably would have been hell cat today. So, um, uh, thanks for the comments. Again, please leave me a comment. I will always promise you leave me a comment, you're getting a comment back from me. Tell me, one guy said, hey, your music was kind of loud. That's fine. Okay, great. I appreciate that comment. I told him that. I do. If you don't like it, tell me you don't like something. It's a-okay. I, no, I have no sense of feeling, so I don't really... Hey, my channel. Uh, but I have fun, and I, and I like that. Good, bad, whatever. So please comment, like it. Do what you have. Um, really great time. So, everyone, have another great week. I think I'll probably have another video. Actually, I got uh, probably two videos coming out this week. I apologize for that. Uh, but they're ones that aren't my usual Sunday morning show. But I'm trying to, su to support some people. Okay? Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Have a great week. All right? Bye.